Um, so it turns out that uh, a long time ago, marriage used to be a simpler, a simpler problem where you had uh, boys on one side and girls on the other, and marriages only took place between the two. And today it's more complicated. Um, I have a couple of cousins who are uh, have same-sex marriages. So, but for the moment, we'll just talk about marriage as the old-fashioned style, where we just have uh, the connections between opposite sexes. Okay. So we think of this problem as in a graph as a bipartite graph. So there's two sides. We have girls on one side and boys on the other, and then we have these compatibility links between them. And we're interested in finding matchings. And a matching simply is a set of edges in which each node appears on at most one of the edges. Okay. So that's a matching. And we'll say it's uh, a maximum matching if the number of such uh, matching edges is the largest possible. And if we can match everyone up, in other words, if the number of boys equals the number of girls equals the number of matching edges, we'll call that a perfect matching. Okay? So here's an example of a non-perfect matching. It's a matching of size 3. And you might ask, well, can you make, can you make a, a larger match out of this? Well, if you look at these three edges, it doesn't, there's no other edge I could add to it which doesn't interfere with the matching property, right? There's no other edge. I cannot link, for example, 5 and 3 and 5 and 4. So in some sense, this is a maximal set, but it's not maximum, because there is a way to reassign the matching edges to get more marriages. So how could you do it? Well, let's just try. Let's say, so 2 is unmatched, right? So we could match it with 2 prime. But then I would have to take away this marriage, right? This marriage matching, right? Which would leave one unmarried. But then I could marry one to one prime, right? But then I would have to get rid of this marriage, okay? But that's okay because now I could marry three to three prime, right? So obviously by removing these two marriages, I could actually get a th another marriage. Everybody see that? So we're interested in this question of when is there a perfect matching? When can we match up all the boys and all the girls? Okay, and what we're interested in is, in is necessary and sufficient conditions for a perfect marriage, or a perfect matching. Okay? So, towards that end, let's define this notation. Um, we'll call it neighbor, a an, an, uh, neighbor set. So if I have a set S of nodes, then I have a neighbor set, N of S, is simply the nodes, the set of nodes adjacent to that set S. And the observation is if I have a bipartite graph that has a perfect matching, then it has to be the case that the neighbor set is always at least as large as the set S for any set. Now, why is that true? Well, notice, if I had a perfect matching, then look at the matches on S. And that matches on S, that means there has to be at least S neighbors, right? Because those are the matching edges. So that proves it, you know, it's almost trivial, OK? So each, S, each if there is a perfect marriage, each node of S has to have at least, or the number of neighbors that S are connected to have to at least be the size. And that has to be true for any set, right? What's nice about this is that this gives us a certificate for the non-existence of a perfect matching. Because if I could find a set S, let's take a set 2, 4, and 5. Notice that the neighbor set of 2, 4, and 5 only has neighbors 2 prime and 5 prime. 
Okay? So there's an example of a set whose neighbor set is not as big, and then there, therefore there cannot be a perfect matching in this graph. So we call that a certificate. It proves that there's no perfect matching. Okay. Any questions on that? Everybody see why that's a proof that it cannot exist? Now it turns out that this, so we'll call this, this condition is necessary, right? That n of s being bigger than s for all subsets is a necessary condition. But it turns out it's also sufficient. Okay. And this, we'll call this Hall's condition. Okay. Um, Hall was a, a very well-known mathematician of the early 20th century, and he worked a lot with um, these types of problems. So Hall's condition says that the size of the neighbor set is bigger than the set for all subsets um, on one side. But we'll just choose it to be the left side of the bipartition. And this condition is necessary and sufficient for a perfect match. So we capture that as Hall's marriage theorem, which says that if a graph satisfies Hall's condition, then there is a perfect matching. And conversely, if it doesn't satisfy Hall's condition for some set, that's a certificate for not having a perfect matching. Okay? So we've already proven this implication, um, the if part, now we'll prove the only if part. Okay, so the only if part says that if this condition holds, then we can find a perfect matching. Okay, and we'll do um, we'll do this by induction. We'll do it by induction on the number of nodes on this one side of the bipartition n. Okay, notice if n is one, it's trivial. So how about to engage the remote audience? Why is it trivial when n is equal to 1? Why can we find, uh, why, does, why does Hall's condition become necessary to prove the case when n is equal to 1? Anyone in the remote site? How about someone here locally? If n is equal to 1, why is this theorem true? Yeah, Ben. You can, I mean, you choose one of, the, one of your nodes, and you know that it has, by Hall's condition, it has a link to the other node, and that's your match. Exactly. So there's only one, there's essentially one choice for s. That's the one node. And Hall's condition says, if the number of neighbors of that is at least 1, so it would have to be equal to 1. I have an edge, and I have a marriage, a perfect matching. Okay, So that's when n is equal to 1. So let's assume the theorem is true for all graphs with k nodes on one side, on each side, where k is with some, um, any number less than n. Okay, so now we want to, in, we want to uh, extend the induction. So we're looking at the case of n girls and n boys. And there's two cases. We have two distinguishing cases. The first case is if we could, if it's true in our graph that every set of R less than n girls likes more than R boys. Okay? So that means that every set of size R on the left side likes at least, the neighbor set is at least, or sorry, likes more than R boys. Okay? So that's the case when the neighbor set is one more than the set uh, S. And the other case is if there is a set R less than N girls that like exactly R boys. Why is there no case 3 here? Why, why don't I have to look at the case where 
our girls like fewer than our boys. Condition. It would violate Hall's condition, right? We're assuming Hall's, that the graph has Hall's condition. We're trying to find a perfect matching, okay? So let's look at case one. Can somebody show me why, why does case one give us a perfect matching? Okay, so we have a set of R, we found a set of R girls. Let's take the, the girls are on the left side. The boys are on the right. We found a set of our girls on the left that like more than our boys. Now, why does that, why does the theorem follow from that case? Well, take the first girl in that set, right? Take, take the first girl in the set of our Girls, we could marry her with anyone she likes, okay? So let's marry her with anyone that she likes. What are we left with after that? What are we left with after we marry that one girl to that one boy? N minus one boy. We're left with N minus one girl. R minus one. R minus one. Well, let's, we're looking at all the girls, okay? So now we're left with N minus one girls and n minus 1 boys, does it still satisfy Hall's condition? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it still yeah. satisfies. So by induction, there must be a perfect matching of the remaining. So case 1 is straightforward. Does everybody see that? If the set of R girls likes more than R boys, then I could freely choose the first girl to marry anyone that she likes, and I'm left with a, a graph that still satisfies Paul's condition, okay? Now case two is a little bit harder, okay? So let's go through. So, so case one we've just done. It's the first girl can marry whomever she likes and Hall's condition will still be satisfied on the remaining n minus one girls and by the inductive hypothesis, we can find a perfect match, okay? Now, the, the case when there's less than, when there's R less than N girls who like exactly R boys, let's see if we could argue that case. Well, the inductive hypothesis says that we can match those R girls because it's smaller, R is smaller than, than N, okay? So the inductive hypothesis says that there is a perfect match. Okay, so we can match up those R girls. What are we left with? We're left with the remaining girls, right? There's N minus S remaining girls. Now, how many boys do they like? Well, the original set of R girls, the original set don't like boys that are outside their set, right? We assumed that they liked exactly our boys, right? So they don't like any of the boys outside their set. Okay? So how many boys do the, the S remaining girls like? They have to like all of those boys by Hall's condition. Okay? So the remaining N minus R girls satisfies Hall's condition, and therefore we could match those, the remaining girls. And so we've matched the remaining girls, we've matched the original girls, and we have a perfect matching 